one of these men is a key figure at Washington, D.C. society functions. What is your name, please? My name is Alfred Day. What is your name, please? My name is Alfred Day. What is your name, please? My name is Alfred Day. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Alfred Day and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to, to Tell the Truth. Stay tuned. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Jackie Cooper. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hi Gardner. Now, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Alfred Day. Of course, only one is the real Alfred Day. The other two have merely assumed that identity. Pamela, will you follow along with this affidavit as I read it? I, Alfred Day, am a freelance butler. At one time or another during my career, I have served the last three queens of England. In this country, I worked three years for Mr. Jay Gould, and for 17 years, I was employed by a member of the Vanderbilt family. I act as personal valet to Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands on his visits to America. Currently, I am working in the nation's capital where my services are in heavy demand by Washington society. I have been butler at approximately 100 parties given by the nation's acknowledged number one hostess, Mrs. Pearl Mesta, signed Alfred Day. All right, panel, you heard these three gentlemen all claim to be Alfred Day, Washington Society Butler. And only the real Alfred Day, of course, is required to answer your questions truthfully. Therefore, for this evening, let us begin our questioning with uh, Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, name the last three queens of England. Uh, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, and Queen Elizabeth again. Uh, number two, wh where did you serve Queen Mary? <coughs> At Weston Hall, uh, Shropshire. Number three, uh, how many regular dining rooms in Buckingham Palace? We have seven altogether, seven regular ones. Seven. And number one, how many servants' dining rooms at Buckingham Palace? Uh, I would say uh, three. Number two, standing in front of the palace, looking through the main entrance, uh, where are the stables, that way or that way? On the right of the palace. Number Jackie one. Cooper. Um, number one, it says here you're a freelance butler. Now, we have freelance actors and we have actors under contract. Do they put butlers under contract? No, sir. They do not. Number two, uh, what years were you with the Vanderbilt family? From 1928 to 1941. 28 to 41. Uh, number three, I live in a, uh, 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 a ranch house, you know, a one-story house. Where would I put the upstairs maid? That's your business, Jackie, entirely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two, uh, what is the Vanderbilt Cup? The Vanderbilt Cup? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I don't know. Kitty? Number one, there was a Broadway musical based on Mrs. Mester. Could you tell me what her nickname was? Uh, the hostess with the mostest, I believe. <laughs> Number two, could you tell me why her parties were so successful? Because she was the leading. She was what? She was the leading I uh, entertainer or lady hostess in Washington. Number three, uh, with your back to the mall, uh, where is the family entrance at Buckingham Palace? With my back to the with my back to the mall, the family entrance is right directly in front. Directly in front. Directly in front. Hi, Garden. Number three, uh, what breed of dog does Mrs. Pearl Mester have? Sponsor. What breed of dog does Mrs. Mester have? She has a Pomeranian. Uh, number two, who is Arthur Treacher? Arthur Treacher was a butler. He was free. He, he, took, was a free he, took the, he was an actor, of course, so who That's usually right. took the part of a butler. 
Number one, to what nation was Madame Mesta, the U.S. Uh, minister? Um, Luxembourg. Number three, uh, uh, this is a peculiar sort of a question, but let's say that Pearl Mester had invited Elsa Maxwell to the party. How would you announce her arrival? I wouldn't wish to do so, sir, but if I had to do it, I'd say, uh, meet, Miss, meet Elsa Maxwell. But I <laughs> doubt it very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's it. It's time to vote, panel. Without consultation, will you kindly mark your ballots? And in so doing, as you usually do, select number one, number two, or number three. Remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. All right, panel, have you all marked your ballot? Mm. Okay. Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three because number two said that the stables were on the right, and I read a whole thing with the diagram which showed that the stables were on the left. And uh, number one, I believe, said that he worked, I believe it was number one, said he worked for the band of books from 28 to 41, and that only adds up to 13 years, and it says in the affidavit 17. I wasn't asked that question. Oh, and number two said that, so... I just didn't figure it was number one. You had to my number one no, I didn't think my vote. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number three also. Uh, because uh, he, he certainly knew, uh, with his back to them all, the entrance to the palace. And number two also, I quarreled with his uh, arithmetic, came out to be 1945 instead of 1941. And the number one said they don't put them under contact and under certain uh, 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 circumstances over here and in England, particularly with royalty, they do sign them to a contract. Probably when they're the star of the household. Yeah, they're not freelance. <laughs> Kitty, your vote. I voted for number one. I don't think number two and number three have ever been to Buckingham Palace in the family entrance or in the stables, because I think the family entrance is on the right and the stables are on the left. <laughs> Opposite. Hi, Gardner. You're well, I voted for number three. I particularly liked his answer about Pearl Mester and Maxwell. They haven't been especially friendly. Uh, I don't like his answer about the upstairs maid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, I, when he first... Um, stood up there, I thought that uh, he looked like he was the only one of the three who was uh, wearing his own suit, and since he's in business for himself, he'd need that kind of a suit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, there you have it now. We've given you our vote and our reasons, and if you're playing with us, as we hope you are on this cool evening, let's see how right or wrong you have been along with us as we discover which one of these three gentlemen right. is the real <laughs> society butler. So will the real Alfred Day please stand up. Thank you very much, sir. Number two, would you tell us who you really are? <coughs> Let me see, sir. Uh, tell us who you really are and what you My do. name is John Gordon Smith, and I'm the office manager of the South American Minerals Corporation. Thank New you, York. sir. <laughs> now, number three, what about you, sir? My name is Arthur Grundy. I'm the export vice president of the R.P. Vanderbilt Company over at 230 Park Avenue. <laughs> gentlemen, we've had a lot of fun. I hope you have. And in checking up on the score here, we find that Kitty was the only one who voted right, which left three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total, gentlemen, of $750 Thank from you, Marlboro Mr. Cigarettes. Yes. And uh, speaking of Marlboro Cigarettes, on your way out, you'll find a carton of Marlboro Cigarettes for each one of you. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Now, panel, may I introduce our next team of challenges. Is your name, please? My name is Lucille Wheeler. What is your name, please? My name is Lucille Wheeler. What is your name, please? My name is Lucille Wheeler. Another affidavit panel, if you'll follow along, please. I, Lucille Wheeler, am Canadian. My father owns and operates a ski resort at Mont Tremblant in Quebec. And there I learned to ski when I was two years old. By the age of 10, I was in active competition. I competed in the Olympic Games in both 1952 and 1956. In 1957, I was named by the International Ski Federation as one of the three top women skiers in the world. In February of this year, at Bad Gastein in Austria, 
I won the world's ski championship in both the downhill event and the giant slalom. Signed, Lucille Wheeler. It's all claimed to be Lucille Wheeler, world ski champion. Let's start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Uh, number one, what is the name of your father's ski resort? Gray Rocks Inn. What? Gray Rocks Inn. Gray Rocks Inn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Number two, um, who was the, uh, who won the, um, where was the 1956 Olympics uh, held? That was in Cortina, Italy. Cortina? Yes. Do you know the whole name of that place? Yes. What is it Cortina called? Cortina Don Paso. May, uh, the, number three, what is the whole name of Cortina? Cortina Don Paso. Uh, number two, who are the, number one, who were the other two women, if you were the top one, and there were three? Andrea Mead Lawrence and Helga Goldsmith. Hi, Gardner. Well, uh, what, is, what is the name of the, of the young Austrian uh, male skiing champion? Tony Saylor. Uh, two, what on a, on a giant slalom, slalom course are, are called gates? Well, they are the poles through which you go. Uh, uh, number two, when you won this uh, giant slalom, about how many gates did you have to pass? Well, there was, um, see, we had, I think, about 26 on the giant slalom. Number three, what would you say you had to pass? How many gates? I'd say there were about 30 gates. And number one? Polly? Number one? About 30. <laughs> uh, number two, it, it says here that you won the World Ski Championship uh, downhill. How else can you ski but downhill? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are three types of slalom. The ordinary slalom, the uh, giant slalom, and the downhill slalom. And I want it for the giant slalom and the downhill slalom. <laughs> I'm not any better off than I was because I still don't know. Well, apparently, you can slalom uphill as well as down, or at least. Oh, flat. oh well. Anyway, I, I, number three. Uh, what year did you, you see hold the ski, the world ski championship? Uh, would you repeat that question again? Please? What what year did Julius Z hold the World Ski Championship? I'm afraid I don't know uh, who he is. Jackie? Um, number one, says here you're Canadian. Okay. Can you tell me uh, who is Christopher Plummer? He's a moving picture actor, I believe. Number two, can you tell me who is Christopher Plummer? No. Uh, number three, uh, also says here that you've been skiing since you were two years old. Can you tell me what is Blue Cross? <laughs> it's an uphill slalom. Uh, that's it, I'm afraid, panel. It's time once again to vote. So without consultation, will you once more mark your ballot and select number one, number two, or number three? Everybody mark. There we go. Hi, and Jackie, everybody mark. All right, Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number three, and I have no excuse because I wasn't confused this time. I just didn't know which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kitty, I mean Jackie, pardon me. I voted for number one because uh, I don't know too much about slaloms and uphill skiing, but uh, her, her answers seemed, she answered with the most authority to me. Okay, Kitty Carlisle. Well, I ruled out number two because she didn't know Cortina D'Ampezzo, and number one and number three both had good answers, but I voted for number one. Okay, hi, Gardner. You're well, right. I voted for number one, too. There's a lot of talk about this Tony Saylor, and even though she asked as a question, as an she answer. Did, didn't she did, Yeah. <laughs> and I think Polly tripped up number three with that question about Z. I yeah. don't think there is a Z. I well, love, there isn't, but she said one. she never heard of her. That's right. That means we should have voted for her, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I turned out to be right. the daughter of Cider C. However, there we have it now. The votes and the reasons for it. And again, I hope that you're voting with us. Let's see which one of these three ladies. Know. You don't want to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, the rest of us do. Let's see which one is the real Lucille Wheeler. And so I'm going to ask the world champion ladies here to please <laughs> slalom them up. Number three. Uh, oh, no, no. Yeah. No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Number one, you tell us who you really are, what you do, please. My name is Mickey Burner. I work for Howard Todman of Goodson Todman Productions. 
Sneak the ringer in on you there. Uh, number two, would you tell us who you are and what you do, please? My name is Jane Isaacson, and I'm a vacation sales representative for United Airlines. By the way, I'd like to mention that Lucille Wheeler would like to donate her share of the prize money to the Snow Eagle Ski Club at saint jovic mont tremblant and that will be done. And let's see what it amounts to. There were three incorrect votes again at $250. <laughs> you got them all. For a total of $750 from Marlboro. Thank you very much, ladies. On your way out, you'll find an individual gift carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each one of you. Good night and good luck. Happy Thank you. Now, we'll get back to our game in just a panel. Let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Ray Wessel. What is your name, please? My name is Ray Wessel. What is your name, please? My name is Ray Wessel. Okay, panel, another affidavit waiting for you. I, Ray Wetzel, live and work in Anderson, Indiana. I work in plant number 10 of the Delco Remy Division of General Motors, where I am a multiple spindle automatic screw machine operator. I came to New York on my first airplane flight, and I'm here tonight to claim the unofficial title of New York's champion sightseer. Since 9 o'clock this morning, I have visited the following places. The Battery, City Hall, Central Park, the United Nations, Columbia University, Grant's Tomb, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Times Square, the Radio City Music Hall, Fordham University, the Hall of Fame, Yankee Stadium, the Empire State Building, Madison Square Garden, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York Public Library, Grand Central Station, the Museum of Natural History, the Polo Grounds, Greenwich Village, Chinatown, the Stock Exchange, the Bowery, the Chrysler Building, Central Park Zoo, the Coliseum, Museum of Modern Art, Carnegie Hall, Hayden Planetarium, the Bronx Zoo, New York Botanical Gardens, the Fulton Fish Market, and the Automat. <laughs> Signed, Ray Weston. Incidentally, each of our challenges tonight will receive one of our To Tell the Truth games. If you'd like to have one of these games, simply visit your local toy store or department store. I'm sure you'll be able to find them there. All right, panel, as you heard, each of these gentlemen claims to be Ray Wetzel, New York's champion tourist. I think you'll agree. We'll start with High Gardner. Hi. Huh? Number three, how come you've been sleeping since you got to town? <laughs> uh, how, did you, how, did you, how did you get around? Uh, would you have a police car to make all of those places, number three? Had a rented car. A rented car. Yes. Siren on it? <laughs> Sir? Was there a siren on it? A siren? No. Needed one to get through the traffic, though. Uh, uh, number uh, one, uh, is the Hall of Fame outdoors or indoors? Yeah, outdoors. Uh, uh, number two, what branch of the automat did you visit? The money, money deal. Beg pardon? The one you put your money in. <laughs> uh -huh. You're sure you're not getting it confused with Grand Tomb? <laughs> uh, number three, what is unusual about the outside of Grand Tomb? Well, the uh, doors were closed. <laughs> oh, boy. Molly Burgess. <laughs> uh, number two, visiting all these wonderful places, what place impressed you the most? New York traffic. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, it, it, it says here that you were... Uh, you were at the Yankee Stadium. I mean, what did you do there? Visited the dugout and also the dressing room, and I got behind home plate. I and thought I the, the baseball season was closed. Well, it was. I met the football coach. Oh, I see. Uh, um, she was right behind home plate, I think. Do they play football on top of a baseball team? Sure. Oh. Jackie? Uh, uh, number three, you're the one man who could give me the answer to uh, authoritative answer to a, a question I have always wondered about. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? As I said before, I don't know. The doors were closed when we got there. Number one, uh, n number one, where did you have lunch? Well, I couldn't tell you. Uh, number two, where did you have lunch? Schaefer's. And uh, uh, number three, what's playing at the Radio City Music Hall? 
Rocket. <laughs> now you know what he noticed. Hi, Gardner. I mean, Kitty Carlisle. Excuse me, dear. Wow, it's well, only at night. Number one, it says here that you're, um, oh, you operate a multiple spindle automatic screw machine. That's right. <laughs> what do you make? Two sixty-eight an hour. Huh? Two dollars and sixty-eight cents an hour. See, you ask a screwy question, you get a screwy answer. <laughs> Aside from your pay, what do you make? Number two. Parts for distributors. My kind of distributors. That's it, panel. It's oh, time once again to vote. Anything. So will you please mark your ballots and vote for number one, number two, or number three? All set, everybody? No. Holly? Okay. Jackie, all through? Yes. All right, Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, I didn't get to ask him the questions about Indiana, which is all I know anything about because I used to live there, but I voted for number two. Okay, Jackie, what about you? I voted for number two because he knew where he had lunch. <laughs> Kitty, your vote? I voted for number one because he didn't know where he had lunch. <laughs> I wouldn't know either if I'd done all that today. And hi, Gardner. Well, I voted for number one because you'd have to see the Hall of Fame to know it was outdoors. Okay, there we have it. The votes are in. The minds are made up. We'll find out right now which of the three gentlemen is the real champion New York City tourist. So, will the real Ray Wetzel please stand up? This, game. this is one of the few times that I've been in on it. You know, normally, I don't know who the real one is either. Oh, so don't look shocked. It's really quite simple. All these gentlemen really are Ray Wetzel. They all live in Anderson, Indiana, and they all work in the same department of the same plant as multiple spindle automatic screw machine operators. <laughs> and today, they actually all visited all the places mentioned in the affidavit. Furthermore, they're not really related. Two of them are third cousins. The other one isn't related to the other two at all. <laughs> but let this be a lesson to you. I don't know what the lesson is. Yes, I do know what the lesson is. It so happens that we today, panel, you don't know it, are a happy birthday group because we're beginning our third year on the air. Well, congratulations uh, to us. <laughs> Pull a joke on you in honor of a birthday celebration. Now, inasmuch as it's true that each of you is Ray Wetzel, and therefore there were no incorrect votes, nonetheless, because of the gag involved, since you actually did fool the panel in every way, we're going to award you $1,000 from Marlboro Cigarettes, and you'll find a carton of Marlboro Cigarettes waiting for each of you on the way out. Thanks for helping us fool the panel in every way. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Well, I guess we had some fun tonight we didn't expect, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the little birthday party panel. Very much. Incidentally, uh, all of you folks stay tuned, you know, because on the Arthur Godfrey Show, our beloved Polly is on tonight with her daddy, who's right out there in the audience watching, too. Or has he left already? He sneaked out. He sneaked out, sneaked out that big, tall fellow. How could he sneak out? Anyway, stay tuned. You'll have a lot of fun with that one, I assure you. And, uh... You're going to be away for two weeks, Polly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be in Florida at the Phantom League. Oh, boy. Thank Betty you. White's going to be here sitting in for you until you get back. Jackie, oh, I don't know how to thank you for being with us for three weeks. It's always such a joy to have you on. Thank you. you. Thank you. But I always enjoy it. And I am going to lead the trek to be watching. Let's see now. It's on uh, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday when you appear in the Hasty Heart. It's the mm -hmm. CBS show of the month. 9.32. Good luck on that. 9.30 to uh, 11. 11. 11. We'll be watching. No you worry. That's it, panel. Good night. Good, good night, night, night. night. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Marlboro Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Key equipment, courtesy of Sig Buckmeyer's Sports Shop. Miss Bergenstown by Wilmot. <laughs>